precious boy. Yes. <gasps> Hello. What are you thinking, Bee? Yeah. Huh? Are you ready to go to the grocery store? Are you ready? Good morning. We are on the way to the grocery store right now. Um, so we decide every Sunday to get up a little earlier and go like right when the store opens because nobody's in there. It's really nice and it's just easier to go grocery shopping with the baby when no one is in the store. So we're on the way to the store and I'm going to walk you guys through what we buy every week for meal prep as well as um, just giving you some tips on how to save some money while we're shopping. friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Kaylee and this is the Fit Mom Files. So this week we are going to be talking about budget friendly meal prep tips. So I'm breaking this up into at least two parts just because I have a bunch of different tips and I don't want to bombard you with too much information. So this week we're going to be talking about my top three tips for saving money while meal prepping because the biggest complaint I hear all the time from clients or friends or even family members is that eating healthy is expensive. And although I do agree that if you're not careful, you can spend a lot more money on fresh produce and quality meat, you don't have to break the bank while trying to be healthy. Before we get into this week's episode, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Like I said before, I'm going to be sharing three really easy steps that you can take in order to save money while grocery shopping. So whether you're planning on meal prepping or you're just trying to learn how to grocery shop healthier, then these tips are for you. Tip number one is to purchase your protein sources in bulk. Whether you are a single person, a family of two, or a family of five, it is so important to do this because at the end of the day, buying meat in bulk saves you lots of money. Even before I was married, I would always go home from college and get my meat from Costco just because it saved me so much money. Yes, I was a single person. There was only me to feed, but I was able to save that giant pack of chicken or that giant pack of ground beef for weeks at a time. Usually I would just prep enough of whatever I bought for myself for the week. Now, since it's Brad and I, I prep enough food for both of us throughout the week and we still have leftovers to put in the freezer. So oftentimes we'll buy you know, lots of chicken breasts, we'll buy lean ground beef and even like canned tuna at Costco and we will just save it in the freezer or whatever we don't use that week. In the beginning of our marriage, we were not doing this and we were kind of pricing out how much it was costing us to buy a pack of chicken from Publix and it was around $20 for one large pack where now we can get two large packs of chicken from Sam's or Costco at the same price. So we're able to use a pack of chicken a week between the two of us and freeze the other. So one, it cuts down on cost going shopping. We don't have to go shopping as often. And two, we're able to have, you know, lots of meat for about the same amount of money that we would usually spend at a boutique grocery store like Publix, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's. A sub tip within this tip is don't try to only shop at the bougie grocery stores. I am a huge foodie. I love Trader Joe's. I'm a huge lover of Whole Foods. I love Sprouts, but at the end of the day, those grocery stores are going to be more expensive. Oftentimes we'll buy our meats from Costco and Sam's, and then we'll go to other local grocery stores that have cheaper produce like the commissary since we do have access to the base since Brad is in the military or even places like Food Lion. They're not only more cost efficient, but their produce is just as good as if you got it from a Whole Foods or a Publix. So I guess the sub tip within the tip for buying in bulk is don't you know think that you're getting lower quality foods from grocery stores that might be more cost efficient. The great thing about buying your protein in bulk, oftentimes if it's meat, you can just freeze whatever you don't use. If it's eggs or egg whites, those things usually don't go bad for quite a while. So I remember, like I said, being in college, I was single, I only had to feed myself. I would buy the large carton of eggs from Sam's or Costco, or I would buy the pack of egg whites from Sam's or Costco. And yes, I can't freeze those foods, but they would last me a long time. They're not going to go bad because they're refrigerated. I definitely went through them way faster than I realized, and it ended up saving me you know, time from going back to the store and money from having to go buy another carton of eggs later on that week. So tip number one is really brief. It's really simple. Just 
buy your protein sources in bulk. I promise you it will save you so much money in the long run. Another great benefit of having a surplus store membership is that you can buy protein powders and other quality supplements in bulk. If you're somebody that feels like you need to have you know, protein powder in order to hit your protein goals, you can most definitely find high quality protein powder sources at these stores as well. Like I said, I'm trying to keep these tips short, sweet, and easy for you to remember. And so we're going to be moving on to our second tip, which is choose cost efficient foods. So a lot of times people think I have to eat healthy. I have to eat fresh fruits and vegetables. And although I do encourage that I am a lover of in season fruits and vegetables, you don't have to purchase lots and lots of expensive organic produce in order to do this. Some cost efficient food sources would be dried beans. You can also do canned beans. You can do rice, oats, any kind of dried grain. You can also even do frozen and canned vegetables. And I know that it is so unpopular to purchase those things because they have a bad reputation. But at the end of the day, frozen vegetables are just as healthy as fresh and they are more cost efficient and last longer. And this goes for canned vegetables and beans as well. These are great sources and they're very cost efficient and they last a long time because of the canning process and you can still be healthy while eating these foods. I just encourage you to rinse off your beans or vegetables that are canned because they do have more sodium than a fresh or frozen vegetable. Typically when eating healthy, you do want your plate to have a lean protein source, a complex carbohydrate, and some sort of vegetable on your plate in order to achieve a full balanced meal. Oftentimes when I tell people this, they think that their grocery bill is going to go up but it doesn't have to. You can always purchase foods like brown rice that are cost efficient and filling. When purchasing something like rice, oats, beans, try to get something that is off brand. I know it's really bougie to buy things that are popular brands but at the end of the day you're really just paying for branding for that company. We always buy off brand foods whenever we're grocery shopping because it saves us tons of dollars at the end of the day and it literally tastes the exact same. This also goes for purchasing your produce. You do not have to purchase organic produce in order to be healthy. Unless you go to a farmer's market and grab fresh produce from there, you're really just spending more money at the end of the day in the grocery store when purchasing organic food. I always buy regular fruits and vegetables and when I come home, I clean them off in my sink with a veggie and fruit wash. This just ensures that I get any kind of pesticides or toxins off of my food and they taste the exact same way and they're just as healthy. Another tip within this tip is to buy some of your cost efficient foods that are dried goods like rice and oats and beans in bulk. Not only do these foods last a long time, but they also save you money at the end of the day because you're buying them in bulk. So far, we've covered how to purchase your protein in a cost efficient way. We've also talked about complex carbohydrates and how to choose cost efficient foods such as rice and beans. And now we're going to be moving into our third tip. And I've kind of already chatted about this. But we're going to talk about how to save money when purchasing produce. So my number one tip when purchasing produce, if you are wanting to purchase fresh produce, is to buy in season fruits and vegetables. This will save you lots of money in the long run. I don't know if you've ever tried to purchase a spaghetti squash during the summertime, but it is significantly more expensive to buy during the summer when it's not in season than it is during the fall. At the end of the day, you're not only leaving with a small spaghetti squash that costs you $8, but you are flushing money down the toilet. You're probably thinking, well, how do I know what foods are in season when I'm grocery shopping? Well, one, you can Google it. And two, I've also attached a little guide that you can look at and see what fruits and vegetables are in season during which parts of the year. If you are someone who still struggles to save money when purchasing your fruits and vegetables or you feel like your grocery bill is still higher than you would like it to be, you can always purchase frozen vegetables. I am a lover of frozen fruits and vegetables. I buy frozen fruits for my smoothies. I will use frozen blueberries all year long for many different reasons. We often buy frozen broccoli and use that because it is one cost efficient. It's still nutritious and delicious and it's something that can last a long time because I can stick it in the freezer. Frozen produce is still just as nutritious as fresh just because it is picked at the peak of ripeness and frozen immediately. So when you're preparing it, just try to avoid boiling it. Boiling your fruits and vegetables, whether they are frozen or fresh, will actually leach out the nutrients that are naturally found in that food, thus making it less nutritious than it was before. So try whether your produce is frozen or fresh to roast it or prepare it in a way other than 
boiling. So that pretty much covers my first three very simple tips for you guys. And this video was short and sweet, but I wanted to give you simple tips that you can apply today in order to save yourself money while grocery shopping and trying to live a healthier lifestyle. So just to recap, purchase your protein sources from a surplus store in bulk. This will save you lots and lots of money in the long run. Tip number two was to choose cost efficient foods like grains, rice, beans, oats, that kind of stuff. You can't go wrong with those types of foods. They're rich in fiber and great complex carbohydrate sources. And the third tip was to either purchase fresh produce that is in season, or if you are still trying to save even more money, you can purchase frozen produce. Like I said before, this is just part one of a series that I plan on doing for budget-friendly meal prep tips or budget-friendly grocery shopping tips for healthy living. So if you have specific questions that you would like to be answered in future videos, be sure to leave them below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, I know it was short and sweet this week, please give it a like as well as subscribe to my channel so you never miss a video. If you're new to the Measuring Whole community, be sure to leave a comment below so I can say hey. I look forward to getting together next week for another episode of The Fit Mom Files. Bye. I'm not approving of this.